Hi and welcome to another video of the QCodes video tutorial series. In today's video we are going to talk a little bit about how to navigate inside the QCodes database, how to extract the data in order to perform for example data analysis or plot your data and then later on I will also talk about some problems that we ran across with using the QCodes database in the past and how we actually solved them. Um, and in order to do so, we first of all have to go into the Jupyter Notebook and maybe just one quick remark, one comment that I would like to make. So the uh, QCodes database is actually a standard formatted database. It's a MySQL database. That means um, you can, of course, use QCodes in order to navigate inside a database. But if there's some reason for you uh, to use a different database viewer, then you can, of course, also use everything else that can, for example, display uh, MySQL databases. Um, but for the sake of this tutorial, we are of course going ahead and using QCodes. Um, and in order to do so, as always, we start by importing QCodes as QC. So import QCodes as QC. Uh, what else will we do? So first of all, we have to import our database. Uh, or to initialize our database and, order, and in order to do so we have to change the configuration files of QCode. So we say qc.config config, and then we have to go into the core and this is of course nothing new to you because this has been done in the previous tutorials already uh, and then we say db underscore location equ equals to and then my experiments database is just stored in the very same folder where I also store this Jupyter Notebook. So I just say dot slash experiments dot db. Okay, um, so how do I initialize the database? Well, in order to do so, I have to first get the in initialization function from QCodes. So from QCodes, QCodes, no typos today. Uh -huh. uh, from Q codes Im import um, and then we say we want to have the initialize initialize and create or create database add function um, no the initialize sorry we want to have the initialize database function this one and then we will, of course, also go ahead and uh, and initialize our database immediately. Um, so this is done now. There's no uh, error displaying. That means everything worked. Um, and now we can actually have a look inside um, what is contained in our database by just having a look at what are the experiments that QCodes is finding inside the uh, database that we just configured. Uh, how do we do that? We just go ahead and say experiments experiments like this um, equals to QC dot experiments. Okay, so uh, how does that actually look like? What What is this experiments object? Uh, well, we can just find that out um, by basically printing it. Okay. Um, so what do we see here actually? Uh, well, first of all, we have this string and then there's a kind of a list below that. So I'll just go uh, through that whole thing step by step. Um, the first thing is the experiment name. And uh, all the experiments that we conducted in the past inside that database always were the same experiment, which was always the DC IV sweep. And the sample was always the test resistor. We always measured the test resistor. Uh, then it basically tells which uh, database we have and where it's actually stored. Um, and then we get a list of all the different runs that are included inside the database. Um, of course, if we had several of these experiments, if there was not only one experiment, but several ones, then uh, we, it would also make sense to loop through that database. So we say for experiment or exp in experiments, experiments, and then we could, for example, go ahead and say print experiment dot name. And what you would get in that case, and you just see for me, it's really just that single experiment. But what you would get what 
would be a list of all the different experiment names that are inside your database. And then you could also go ahead and for example say, okay, um, I have a lot of DC IV sweeps because I have a lot of samples where I performed that IV sweep. So I want to know what is the exact sample that we measured in that particular case. So you could just go ahead and say experiment dot sample name, sample underscore name. And if you would do that, then you would get the name of each sample uh, or the name of the sample that has been used in that particular experiment. So you would get a list of all the different um, experiments and the samples that have been used inside the whole database, which could be potentially a really long list, uh, depending on how many uh, experiments you have stored in there. And then you could also go ahead and for example, say you want to know for each single experiment, what are the data sets that are included in uh, this particular run? And then, oh, there was a typo, I guess. Data, uh, ah yeah, that's data underscore sets, like that, okay. Um, and then as you can see here, you get basically an overview over all the different uh, data sets that have been acquired inside one experiment. And in this case, we have these two data sets and then the ones where we later on had uh, several instruments. Okay, uh, now we know how to actually find the experiment that we are searching for. But let's say uh, we want to plot the experiment. And in order to do so, uh, we first have to import the data set which is included in a particular experiment. Then we go ahead and plot that and I guess you already know how this is done in Python because you probably did that in the past already. Um, but we are going to use matplotlib for this as this is kind of a standard tool. Um, and we will also use pandas which is a certain kind of uh, package also in Python which is being used for big data analysis a lot lately. Um, okay, so how do we start? First of all, we have to import our packages. So in my case, I'm saying um, uh, let's say, let's do it this way, from matplotlib uh, import pyplot as plt, oh, there's a s missing, as plt, and then we want to import pandas as pd. Okay, um, so let's say we want to have our first experiment over here, this one. So experiment one, uh, run number one, uh, which includes this data set. Uh, how do we actually receive that data set? Well, first of all, we say data set equals two, and then we can just use the function load by ID, which we of course have to import in a second. Uh, that is part of the QCodes package. Um, how do we actually do that? We say from QCodes import load by ID. Okay, now this gives me a runtime warning, but we will just ignore that for a second. Uh, and there we have our data set. So how can we actually work with that now? Um, well, we could, for example, use the pandas package. So we say df equals two. Mm, and then we just say dataset dot, and then we use a function which is called uh, get data as pandas data frame, like this. And then what we get is a data frame. And if you're using pandas, you're probably used to that view already, uh, which includes all the different data, which is part of the data set. Um, so you can see that this is pandas because it, for example, nicely does the work of uh, making the big data sets, uh, reducing their size in the plot. So you always see the beginning of every data sets. Then you have that uh, gap filler over here and then you have the end of every data set. And we have that for different kind of uh, rows and columns. Um, and now let's say I wanted to have the I value. So how do I get that? Uh, I can just go ahead and say, like in a dictionary, I want to have I. And now I get basically the whole data set, which basically say, says here as a, as a sweep, uh, as the parameter that has been swept, we have the V set, so the set voltage, and then we get the I value, which is the swept one. 
Um, now let's say we wanted to plot that. So then we would just say plt.plot as we always do because we are doing that as a part of our job in experimental physics. Uh, and then we just go ahead and say plot, for example, i on the x-axis and voltage on the y-axis for whatever reason, but let's just say we want to do that. Um, and then we just go ahead and what we get is basically this plot over here. And then of course, being good experimental physicists, we would of course go ahead and also put labels on that. So let me just quickly do that. Uh, so now we have the voltage on the y-axis and the current on the x-axis. Okay, um, and of course we could now save that, we could perform a fit to that or whatever, um, but this is basically up to you and what you want to do with your data. Okay, so far so good. Um, and this is also perfectly working. And this, uh, we did that for quite some time and we were really happy with it. But there are actually some problems that we ran across with. And uh, I'm just telling you that right now and trying to help you uh, to not run into this problem. So first things first, uh, we started off with one single setup and doing so, uh, and one person who was operating that setup and doing so you don't run into any problems. But let's say you wanna add a second setup to your to your Qcodes framework. So what we started off doing was we basically took a second setup and we routed the data to the same database uh, that we also used in the first setup. And there you actually start to run into a problem because Qcodes is blocking that database uh, if one one uh, kind of piece of software is uh, working on that database, another one can't access the database. So if you have uh, one notebook, for example, which is producing data on one setup and the other one starts a measurement at the other setup and you try to write in the same database, you get a problem. How did we solve that? Well, basically we just took for every single uh, setup that we have, we, make an, um, we, we created an own database. And that also works just fine. But then let's say uh, someone has been working on the setup before you actually did, and then they want to use the data which they were measuring, which they were measuring for data analysis, and they try to uh, to copy the data from the database or to to access the database while you are performing measurements over there. Then you basically run into the same problem once again that you want to um, get data from the database while another Jupyter Notebook is working in that particular database. Um, so how did we solve that? Well, the first, uh, that was the quick and dirty solution was, we just copied the, the whole database and then we used that for data analysis. And that of course works if you have a very small database, but once you start to acquire a lot of data inside your database, um, you will run into problems because you don't want to copy 20 gigabytes of uh, data every single time that you want to access the database, right? And this is actually uh, where the database extraction comes in pretty handy and I'm going to show you that right now. So the idea is that you copy the data that you have been acquiring during your measurements into an own kind of database which you could, for example, use for analysis. So everything is compact inside uh, that analysis that you uh, uh, inside that analysis database that you have been uh, defining after your measurements or maybe also during your measurements. Um, so how does that actually work? Well, Qcodes has a function for that and we are going to import that of course first. So we say from Qcodes dot dataset dot and there you can actually see that it's uh, only for that purpose database dot extract uh, database underscore extract underscore runs import and then we say extract runs into db uh, and we are of course also going to use that function immediately and uh, how does it actually work well you have to tell it two different things uh, three different things first of all which database do you want to get the data from Secondly, which database do you want to get the data into? And third, what data do you actually want to have or what do you, data do you want to extract? Mm. So first of all, we have this database which contains all the data. So we just tell it the path. 
then we want to have a database where we store the data inside and this could be an existing one but in my case there is no database so far so i'm just um, imagining a new one i'm just coming up with a new name for one and then it's automatically created or rather automatically so um, analysis dot db and then I have to come up with some runs that I want to copy. And let's just say for the moment, I want to have run one, run two, and then let's say six and seven. So I just go ahead and say one, two, six, seven. Enter, and that's it. So here the database is basically created and then it's also automatically filled with all the data. Um, now let's just prove that for a moment in order to do so we just copy what we what we did before already so I'm just copying the in initialization part like this um, and then I'm just changing the path of the uh, DB that I'm importing into Q codes like this and let's see what experiments are contained in that new database and well we have experiment one two three and four Okay, strange because I said I wanted to have six and seven. Why is it three and four? Well, that's because every database always has its own ID. So the ID is just always plus one for every data set. So it's always just um, going in steps of plus one. That means if I have a six and seven over here and I add them uh, after two, then I just get three and four in that case here. Um, and this totally makes sense in our scenario. But of course, uh, because it, just imagine you had two databases and you wanted to copy one data a set of data to the other one and they're already like, let's just say we had six and seven and in the other one we already have 10 data sets, then we would override stuff and we don't want that, right? So that's why it's just incrementing every single time. But now, of course, it becomes a little bit more difficult to find out what kind of data set is this actually relating to? So what data set did the data set three in my new database actually original be? Um, and that's where the, um, where the globally unique identifiers, GWTs, come into play. Um, and in order to explain to you what that is, just give me a second and let me restart the kernel once again. Okay, so now that we have restarted our notebook, let's just have a look. Um, at this uh, globally unique identifier. So how do we do that? Uh, we basically go into, we initialize our database once again, and then uh, we take a single experiment. So X dot, and then we say data underscore set, and then we just give it a number. Uh, we import it six, and then we want to have this globally unique identifier like this. And this is the part that we already knew from before. So this is the list. And at the end, we have that cryptically long number over here. And this is the globally unique identifier. So this is being copied along all the different uh, databases every single time that you copy your data or you extract your data into a different kind of database. Um, and this helps you to find your original data back again. So let's just quickly prove to you that this has actually been, been copied. So here we have the number six, which should be number three now in our new database if everything went right. Um, so let's just go ahead and copy that what, what I did before and then uh, take the number three over here. So we do that. And what we get is this. So this is ending on BA6C and that's actually the same thing that you find over here. So this is the globally unique identifier and this helps you to track your data across the different databases. And with that, I'm actually at the end of today's tutorial. I hope you liked it. As always, below the video, you can find a link to the documentation and to all the tutorial stuff related on the Git repository, such as the documentation of QCodes itself. Um, and then see you in the next video. Bye.